So this is the last video of creating flak model for a seismic analysis of an embankment dam for a geotechnical analysis. So up to this point, we're at the end. We've solved the entire analysis. We ran 8.3 seconds of the input. And now we can look at some results. So the analysis is done. And you can tell if you go into any of the plots that we've made, it not only shows the steps, so we're at 2 million steps about, it shows the dynamic time of 8.3 seconds. And here it should show the same thing, 8.3 seconds. And there's not in this model, the default model tab. So the analysis for our purposes is done. Let's look at some common things to look at. So one thing you want might be interested in is how much did the crest displace? So what you can do is this code here, print X displacement, Y displacement of I18, J15. This is a grid point up here on the crest. So we will go ahead and do that. We will print that out and that gives us some values. The Y displacement, the X displacement is very small because we're timesing it by 10 times 10 to the negative 2, so 0 .00, so 0 0.06 feet. And the Y displacement is 0.1 feet. No, I'm sorry, negative 0 0.018 feet. So negative 1.1 feet here. There's nothing to be multiplied, no times 10 to the anything here. So it's just negative 1 feet. And so we can plot the history displacement versus time. So instead of plot model, we're going to down do a plot history. And we're going to name it crest displacement. And we will grab the y displacement and hit control and grab that one so we can go get two at once. This is the x displacement of the crest, and we'll do dynamic time versus dynamic time. So the y displacement is this darker line, and it's gradually going down to about. This says negative 10, but this is times 10 to the negative 1 up here. So this is negative 1.0 feet, a little bit more, just like our print says. And the um, X movement is moving back and forth with very, not moving that much from 0 at the end. So in normal circumstances, you would want to run this analysis until you have a flat line versus time. So at the end of the earthquake, you want the crest to not be moving anymore, so it would be flat. In, on both these lines, but this is just an example, so we're not worried about that. Another thing that people are interested in is this shear strain. So let's do a plot history of the shear strain, well, yes, shear strain of 30, of element 30.3 versus time. So we'll say SSI, shear strain increment versus time for this element. And you can see it increased to about point, somewhere between 0.4 and 0.3, 0.36, let's call it, versus dynamic time. So we can, that's good, but let's look at the plot of uh, shear strain increment contour plot. So that's in model, and we will go to zone condition. We will go to contour zones and see strains and SSI. So we'll say SSI contour. We'll put the grid point on the outside, the grid, and we will also, well, we won't do anything yet. We'll just look at it. Okay, so most of the strain is happening down here in the foundation. It's to be expected. Two slip surfaces happening. This is Concentration of, of strain is where the slip surface is happening. Most of the strain is happening in this downstream foundation, down here where it's blue. So it shows about a 0.2 strain. So let's add the element number for each element to this plot. And now we can see the one that we were looking at in the time was 30, 30, 30.3, sorry. And this SSI. Here shows it was about, for this, for that element, ended at about 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.36, 0.
but here it's showing that it was somewhere about 0.18. So that's, it gets a little confusing because there are two different numbers, but they're related. So to get the exact shear strain of that element, we can do print SSI of I30J3. So that shows us to be 0.36, about 0.358. Now that coincides with what we saw in the time here. So this is about, we can hit XY, now we have the coordinates. So this Y is 0.358, which is the same as when we printed it. But it is different than what the contour shows. This shows about 0.18. So the, this happens because of the way that it's plotted. So it's always going to be half. Um, when half the strain here will be half of what is shown on your plot or when you print it here where is it at 0.3856 so it'll always be half and when when it always half when you have this extrapolated by averaging thing here so you can change that by going to I can't recall exactly model options preference settings plot and then you can do if it says extrapolate it'll show here but you can unclick that if you want and it will now this is 0.36 and this this matches our 0.36 but then you get a stranger looking plot so normally you just have to um, so we'll change that back so normally you just have to times it by two here so averaging okay hit refresh and now this is half of what it actually is so then it gets even more confusing because this 0.36 value that we printed out is the SSI but that's not what engineering strain is a lot of people geotechnical engineers are interested in engineering strain it's something that can be related to what a, a direct simple shear test can give um, in the lab they give an engineering strain and if you, the way that we can relate FLAC to that test is we take the SSI printed value and times it by 2. So that would be 0.359, let's call it, times 2 is 0.7. So now that's 70% strain right here. And this looks about right. You, can me you could measure this out if you wanted to get this uh, this y value and this x value and the ratio sh should be around 70 percent okay so strain is something that people are interested in and then something else is the volumetric strain so we recorded that as well so let's do plot history so for the same element 33 30-3 here volumetric strain versus time and we'll call it volumetric strain increment okay so this one is going down it's going negative so it's contracting volume contraction um, and so that's what's happening okay and then another thing that someone might be interested in is the pore pressure versus time so we we followed that as well, so we'll do make another plot, history, and for that same element we have pore pressure versus time, and we will call it pore pressure versus time. And so since this is the more cool model, um, <coughs> it moves, but if you're using the PM4 sand model or some more advanced soil model, you'll get a more permanent um, pore pressure during the run. So this one is move. It's moving a lot, um, and there's some permanent movement. It looks like you can kind of see a trend in there, but not really. But this is what the pore pressure looks like now. If you want the pore pressure ratio, you could extract this data from FLAC, put it into an Excel or some other program, and divide it by the initial effective stress. But then you could also minus out the hydrostatic stress and put that in the numerator out of the out of the pore pressure here so you'd have the excess pore pressure divided by the initial effective stress and that would give you a measure of a pore pressure ratio and you could plot that versus time if you wanted to 
if you want to um, so the, another thing you could do another thing that people might be interested in is you look at plot the shear stress so let's look at the shear stress of that same element here we go versus time shear stress versus time okay so and it looks something like this okay so what you could do here is similar to what you could do with the pore pressure you could take this these numbers out of flack and into excel and then you could divide this each one of these numbers by uh, initial effective stress and then you would have your cyclic stress ratio and then you would have your CSR versus time for the, that element if you wanted to do that. So one way to get histories out of um, FLAC is to go ahead and let's see, you go to utility and you go to history and you want this history to table button. There's also a FLAC command that will do this, but you know you can use this as well. So you go to history to table and you have to give it a table number because we're going to create a table so we need to identify so let's just call it 52 and you just hope that you don't you're not replacing some other table that you've already created but I don't think we created 52 so let's look at the shear stress of this element 33 30 comma 3 so the average so the shear stress versus time okay and we'll hit okay so we're changing a history to a table and that's how we're going to extract it first. So you, there's other ways to get a history out of FLAC, but this is just one way. So the command that is going to be executed is now up here. I hit execute, and then I refresh it. Okay, so now we can see down here history, right, 13 versus 50, and put it into table 52. So now we can go to utility and then table. And now 52, table 52, see table 100 was the input of the velocity, the earthquake input. But 52 is just created, so we can hit edit, and it probably will take a while. And here's all the numbers. We're at the bottom here, so let's go up to the top. And then you can just do control all and copy it out into whatever you want, if you want. Putting it into a text file probably isn't the best, but you could put it into Excel and plot it from there and manipulate it from there. So, okay. So that's some things you can do when you're done with the dynamic analysis.